self with mankind so we have to understand that even though the the dispensation of grace is here it does not change the ultimate end of a person's life in other words because we're under grace you still have to abide by the instruction because sooner or later grace is not going to be anymore there'll be no a time for repentance after the trumpet sounds time will cease to be so we've got to understand this warfare is a spiritual warfare and it's it's the main weapons are psychology I said before the devil can trick you if you let him trick you and the main weapon that the devil uses in the psychological warfare sometimes it uh, he, he tells you it don't take all this or this is not necessary and sometimes uh, here uh, the Antichrist will give you a spirit of rebellion and the rebellion can come in subtle form but anytime you oppose a a direction of the leadership this is rebellion and the Bible says rebellion is worse than what than witchcraft so you know if God hates devil worship you know how much more he hates rebellion so always examine yourself always keep your life under a microscope so that you don't fall short because when again when that trumpet sound is not going to be time to say Lord I didn't know Lord I'm sorry well Lord uh, what about that one over there now you don't worry about that one over there you worry about this one right here this is the one we've got to worry about is individual self so once we understand that this is a spiritual warfare based on uh, psychological factors then we've got to line ourselves up in the way the best way that we can do it is to constantly stay in the word keep yourself in the word and keep yourself under the word when you keep yourself underneath the word that means you have humbled yourself and there is nothing that the devil can come to cause you to deflect or twist or turn away this warfare of Armageddon is very important that we understand this now turn over to Daniel seven, wait, wait a minute did, did we get verse 20 Bring out verse 20, daughter. 19 and 20. Now this deals with the end of the battle. The beast, or which is the Antichrist, was taken. And the false prophets that brought miracles before him. Read. that had deceived them that received the mark of the beast deception or being tricked by the enemy you don't need to be tricked by the devil and you can't be tricked by the devil as long as you stay in the word you have to understand brothers and sisters again the art of deception that the enemy uses now watch close that have received the mark of the beast read now anytime you receive the mark of the beast you worship the image or the representation of evil you don't actually get down on your knees and say oh Satan now hallelujah Satan no but your lifestyle is conducent to that which is in the atmosphere of wrong so if it's in the atmosphere of wrong then that is satanic worship even though you might not even never mention the devil's name a lot of people go to church and they're worshiping Satan and don't even know it. This is the deception that the enemy has placed on them. And this is why we've got to be aware of every device that the enemy can use. Jealousy, strife, bitterness. Praise God, get rid of all of that. And, and, and worry. My goodness, this thing is pressing me and I'm worried about it. I don't understand why God ain't delivered me yet. And I don't understand why God ain't fixed this problem when you start wondering why God ain't done his job this means that you doubt God as being God you doubt that God got supreme power so you don't say how come you say Lord I rejoice and I thank you for the valleys I thank you for the mountaintop I thank you praise the Lord hallelujah Paul said when I had 
everything, I rejoice. When it didn't have nothing, I still rejoice in the name of the Lord. It don't change God from being God. So what we've got to do is not trying to develop a pity party and then try and use a psychological weapon against God. Lord, how come you allowing me to go through this? You go through this because it is a part of the testing ground. It's a part of the wilderness journey. And if you don't go through this, you're going to th go through that. And that or this, what difference does it make as long as you're going through? But if you're going through with Jesus, as I've said many times, it don't make no difference what you're going through. And I said before, God will never put on you more than you can bear. Now, you might think that this thing is weighing you down. But if it's weighing you down too heavy, it's because you're not giving it over to the master. Hallelujah. When, when, when pressure starts building up in you to such a degree, you better start to learn how to pray and how to worship God. I thank God for that prayer, amen, that evangelist opened up. I could feel, praise God, a breakthrough. Hallelujah. I could feel power going forward. This, praise the Lord. Sometimes it's all right to say, Lord, if you're on your job, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Watch and see who looking. Amen. Amen. You do things decent in order. But when you're in the house of God, you, you praise him. You pray and call his name because you got a right to call his name and you got a right to praise him and to lift him up. And the more you do it with a fervency of spirit, this allows the inner you to make a breakthrough. See, the devil can keep you bound until you break loose. Amen. You, you, you take a bird and keep him in a cage and he fly around the cage. But when he gets loose, he don't fly to the nearest tree. He flies up in the sky because he's free now. Hallelujah. So when you get free, you've got to let the enemy know, I'm set free. Praise the Lord. And the best way you can do it, because I said before, this is a psychological warfare. You've got to praise him and let him know that I'm happy. I'm overjoyed. And the more you get into this euphoria, the more it creates a faith image that you reflect before God. And God said, mm, look at my child. Going through with praising and lifting up my name. That makes God happy in his context knowing that he's your father. Church, you cannot run this race with your head down. You cannot run this race, hear me, blaming God or the person next to you or the one in front of you you can't run your race like that. You run your race understanding that I'm in a warfare and I can't lose. I'm going to win. I don't know when I'm going to win. I don't know when this battle is over, but I'm in it for the duration. Y'all know what duration means? Back in the Second World War, when they drafted you, they said you drafted for the duration. Duration means you in it till the war is over. <laughs> if it takes three years, four years, five years, you're not out there. Uncle Sam's army until after the war is over. Praise the Lord. So we've got to understand we're in this battle till the war is over. All right. Which had received the mark of the beast. Now again the mark of the beast is a psychological numerical equation 666. Bible says the number of man. Now this mark which is I said before, it's psychological because you're speaking in a symbolic form. But it, the mark is accepted when you deny the holy way of God. And I've shared for an example, supposing you can buy a car for a thousand dollars if you sell your old raggedy car for twelve hundred dollars. Now the car you're trying to buy it got a good motor, good transmission. But the car you're trying to sell got a bad transmission and a bad motor. But you don't tell the person, this car, it, 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 but you want this other car. But you don't tell the person trying to buy your car, it's got a bad engine and it's got a bad uh, transmission. Because you know what he's going to do. Oh, well, thank you. Bye. And he's going on down the road. You can't buy or sell unless you receive the mark 666. In other words, you can't reach a, a, a vantage point that you are trying to reach unless you tell a lie about it. Unless you use a form of deception. And a form of deception can be a lie. And most of the time it is. Amen. Now I know the Bible says be wise serpent harmless as a dove. 
but you have to put that in its proper sequence that you don't defraud your brother.